hi everyone. So today I will uh, talk about my amazing learning learning experience at Liber. I a little bit about me. So uh, after uh, I'm born uh, in Tunisia, so and after an experience uh, in Spain. France uh, and the Philippines, I came to the U.S. Uh, to Baltimore uh, to join uh, Leo's teams, uh, Leo, Leo's team, uh, which is a, an R bioconductor powered team, uh, data science, as a staff scientist. So here, the whole team, and here, me. Uh, so it's like uh, as part of the team. So it was uh, an amazing experience that started in uh, 2022 and where I learned a lot uh, and I will explain today all what I learned during this uh, amazing experience. So when I came to Liber, I took over the QSVAR a project which is a quality surrogate variable analysis framework for an inequality correction adapted for diversified brain regions, uh, which has led to the development of the QSVAR package. Here, uh, the link to the package. If you want to have more information, uh, it's a bioconductor package. And uh, a little bit about the project I was involved in. So um, post-mortem uh, brain tissue are a valuable resource to study uh, neuropsychiatric diseases. Nevertheless, there is an, uh, a bias introduced by uh, RNA degradation uh, due to post-mortem interval. So the post-mortem interval is the time that elapses from the death of the person and the collection of its tissue for uh, analysis. This introduced a bias uh, in our uh, differential expression studies. And uh, our goal uh, in the QSVA uh, project is to correct for this bias uh, in the differential expression uh, analysis study. So the first thing when uh, so we developed uh, a package called uh, QSVAR, uh, which is the uh, so the result of the analysis uh, we conducted here uh, at Liber. So here, uh, what I show in this uh, panel is when uh, the user uh, when he provides his uh, data. So we have two uh, alternative. Uh, when we don't apply uh, QSVAR and when uh, we apply uh, QSVAR. When we don't apply QSVAR, we show that in this uh, T-equal plot, which is a scatter plot showing a case control differential expression uh, T-statistic versus the in the Y-axis, the degradation time T-statistic we see a high correlation between these two statistics, which shows uh, so an association between uh, differential expression results and uh, degradation uh, and uh, degradation, which shows that uh, so our differential expression results are co-founded by uh, the degradation effects. On the other hand, when we apply uh, so QSVAR, we see there's, there is a low correlation between these two T statistic and this uh, differential expression quality plot. And this uh, shows that so our uh, differential expression results are uh, not co-founded uh, confounded by degradation. So thus, uh, so uh, we don't have, we have more uh, re reliable results. So here uh, the uh, color scale shows um, uh, data density, point density. So 
we see so here for each point, so it's a transcript. And then uh, we see that uh, when the uh, data density is low, so it's like the density of the points is low, uh, so the color is uh, shown in purple. And so when uh, there is uh, lots of points, we can see, you know, it's like that uh, the color is yellow. And here, uh, what I show in the panel G is the different uh, QSVAR uh, model, which are the results of our uh, analysis. And what we did, so we have uh, three different models that uh, we applied. We have the main model where we adjusted for degradation time and region, and the interaction model where we looked at the combined of effect of degradation time uh, and brain region. So here uh, we selected the top uh, significant 1,000 transcript. And for this model, we took the union of the uh, top selected 1,000 transcript from the main and interaction model. For the top 1,500, we did the same, but uh, we selected uh, 1,500 instead of 1,000. And for the cell component model, we adjusted uh, for the cell type proportion that we've got from the deconvolution analysis. So the main goal of the project is to correct for uh, degradation in the differential expression analysis, leading to a low correlation between the uh, two uh, statistics. And what we did, uh, we used a uh, uh, LIBER dataset, BrainSeq phase two uh, dataset, and Habenula dataset, to uh, show that applying for, when we apply QSVAR, we reduce uh, for the correlation between, uh, so uh, uh, brain sick phase two schizophrenia versus control, so case control uh, T statistic and the main model degradation T statistic. So here, what we show, so it's like, we show the uh, brain sick phase two, so uh, brain sick phase two, we have uh, in this data set, uh, so we have uh, two main brain region, GLPFC and uh, HIPPO. And here we show the individuals that we have from the control case and from the schizophrenia case. And what we did, so we applied a different adjustment method so uh, we see that, for example, when we adjust for RIN, we still have uh, a correlation between a differential expression analysis uh, and degradation. And uh, when we uh, use, uh, when we adjust for quality metrics and for uh, ancestry, we also still have uh, some association, but. Uh, when we use QSVAR and when we add quality surrogate variables to our uh, statistical model, we see that this correlation is almost null. We did the same for uh, the Habenula dataset, and we observed the same results that uh, so uh, when uh, using QSVAR, and in this case, we use the top 1000 model, we, adjust, uh, we adjusted for uh, the effect of degradation and we controlled the degradation effect in our differential expression uh, study. So uh, here we show a big picture of when uh, using a LIBER dataset. So here, what we show is like the different uh, G equal plots that we have. And the in the uh, X axis, we have the schizophrenia versus control T statistic. And in the Y axis, we have the main model degradation T statistic. And we wanted to show that the differential expression is co-founded by degradation. So here in the panel A, when we don't apply 
uh, QSVAR model, we see that the background uh, is like have a darker uh, red. Uh, and this so darker red uh, shows like uh, a high absolute correlation compared to the panel B where we see like a uh, light red and uh, we see we can conclude that QSV are uh, models which are the top 1000, top 1500 and the cell component model maintain low correlation indicating an effective control of degradation effects in our uh, differential expression analysis. So when using uh, a QSVAR model, we reduce the uh, degradation effect in our analysis. So this was uh, the main uh, project which has led to the development of the package. And uh, what I learned from this experience is that it's very, very important to well structure uh, your uh, project. So it's like having a good project organ organ organizational structure is very important. Here I show so the GitHub of the QSVA. So the QSVA GitHub and mainly uh, here we have like a structure to have a code folder, plot folder, uh, to have a, a folder for process data and for the raw data separately. So I really found this uh, uh, like organization and having this structure is very, very helpful to well structure your project and my project during this experience. And yeah, the other point that I found really important is uh, having a good code documentation. So when you come and you work on your data, then you have to think about the next person that will come and that has uh, to read your code and to understand your code. So having a, a good uh, documentation will make it easier for the other person to understand your code. And then uh, also uh, during this project, so I tried to uh, make everything modular and uh, to uh, make functions so the code won't be uh, duplicated. So when the code is duplicated more than twice, use functions. So the main yeah, idea is, uh, I think it was very helpful to learn about the best practices, you know, uh, for code documentation, how to structure your project, how to style uh, your code and uh, other uh, so thing I try to apply during this project is using the uh, Tidyverse uh, ecosystem. So I used uh, for that many libraries like uh, ggplot2 for uh, data visualization, deployer for data wrangling. Uh, I used a lot table. I, I used like string manipulation for regular expression when also uh, dealing with factors for CAD, TGR, and also I tried to use as much as possible per the map instead of using like uh, for loops. So it was very, very helpful to structure uh, the whole and 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 also to make it easier uh, to the other person when uh, she or he will come to uh, read the code. One other thing uh, I've learned also from Leo, I think he was all the time telling me to commit frequently. So it's like every time you make a change uh, to commit, so git add, git commit, git push here, I show all the commits I've done during the project. So you can see that, yeah, uh, I've made like 1,355 commits. And uh, it was, yeah, uh, using version control before coming to Libre. 
I was using a little bit version control, but not for like all the time committing and pushing my code. So every time I was making like changes, big changes. So then I was committing, but then I learned here that it's better like for every like uh, like small change to uh, commit and push like off. Uh, also, during uh, my experience at Liber, uh, I used a Slurm and Slurm Array. So uh, it was uh, very useful to uh, launch jobs in parallel. It was very good to uh, get these skills uh, to then, uh, so for my next experience, when I have uh, to use HPC to uh, so use Slurm and Slurm arrays uh, when needed. And also uh, I've learned how, well, uh, I used a lot of Slurm jobs that Nick has uh, developed. I found it also very, very uh, useful and helpful when you have uh, to write a Slurm like scripts and bus scripts. And uh, so uh, the QSVA, so we had like the uh, QSVA uh, GitHub, um, so a repository for the analysis, but also we have the QSVA R package. And uh, I was, uh, so during my uh, like experience here, I tried to improve the unit test and functions. And for that, uh, I used a lot of uh, packages such as test that, dev tools, our oxygen, so uh, to document the function and use this. So here I show like when, yeah, it's like you add uh, your function, add the uh, document your function, write unit test. I found it very helpful when you add your function to write the unit test at the same time and to document the function. Don't, you know, uh, write your function and then after a few months to come, you know, and write your unit test. Yeah, so about also this, keep documentation in mind. Uh, always, yeah, uh, like document uh, your function, uh, try to have a clean readme description use. So uh, it's very helpful. Uh, and also uh, to use package down uh, for your package to have a documentation uh, about your package. Here I show the QSVAR uh, GitHub repository and all the commits uh, we've made during that period. And also I collaborated with uh, Cynthia in the single cell mutium uh, attack and uh, gene expression project. And I think I've learned a lot. Well, I'm sure I've learned a lot from this experience uh, with uh, Cynthia, which was very helpful for me to understand and to learn about uh, chromatin accessibility. So it was a very good learning experience. And uh, during, so uh, last summer in August, 2023, uh, I've had the chance to get a scholarship to attend the BioC 2023 in Boston, where uh, I presented a package demo about QSVAR. Here, uh, the link, so if you want to have uh, a look at it, so here the link to the YouTube-like channel, where you can learn more about the package and learn more about the package demo I've given during the BioC uh, 2023. Uh, during my experience also, so at Liber, uh, I found it very useful to uh, present at the uh, LIBG RSTAT Club. Uh, I really enjoy uh, learning and also like showing and my well, uh, sharing my knowledge mainly, and also getting feedback from my colleagues uh, about like, because when we teach mainly, uh, we learn, uh, actually we, we can learn if we, uh, when we teach, it's the best way to know what we didn't uh, learn well. So uh, when we've been asking, 
question or uh, uh, or sharing, you know, your knowledge, you realize that maybe you didn't understand this part well, or uh, you didn't uh, understand that part well, and also um, improving your presentation skills. So I found it really helpful to improve my skills in that way, and also to uh, share and to like, for example, for some of these uh, art staff club, I was collaborating with uh, like colleagues such as Nick, such as Jill, and it was an amazing, I think, learning experience. Uh, I used also many tools and I've learned many tools that, uh, yeah, I didn't know about before, uh, such as using BioRender, uh, Illustrator, using a lot Slack for communication and to ask questions, uh, using uh, SciWheel cross-reference and Google Docs uh, for writing like paper writing. So it was a very good opportunity to learn how uh, to uh, use these uh, tools to increase your uh, productivity. And uh, so uh, Liber experience wasn't only about work, but also, uh, so we had lots of fun. Uh, these are photos from like last year, uh, Crab Feast. Uh, it was my first experience eating crab here, uh, so in Baltimore, and I really enjoyed this experience. It was really amazing. So now I'm really, well, I can't say addicted, but I really enjoy uh, yeah, eating crabs. And so uh, my experience at Liver was uh, an amazing in, uh, experience, mainly because uh, so the team, it was, so I had the chance to be part of an incredible team. It was very good experience. I really enjoyed it. And I thank everyone for giving me the opportunity to share, to exchange and to to learn and to grow as a scientist. And thank you very much. <laughs>